Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Hope you're all doing well. If you've been following me for a while, you know there are a bunch of different ways to finish your guitar. And all those different ways have merits to them. They've all got their own reasons. Different types of finishes are applied using different methods. And those finishes have different characteristics, be it durability, gloss level, ability to age, uh, feel, or even in the case of an acoustic guitar, tonal properties. So I've already done several videos about the different kinds of finishes and how to choose them and what the differences are. But in today's video, we're going a little different route. In today's video, we're gonna talk about what is the easiest way to finish your guitar. Now, when we talk about ways to finish a guitar, we're not talking so much about the product itself as we are the application method. What way is the easiest? And like I said, there are a bunch of them. So first off, in order to make a determination on this, we need to define what we mean by easy. What does it mean to be easy? Brian, whatever you're typing right now, just stop. No, I'm just kidding, keep going. So when I say easy, in this case, what I'm gonna be talking about is, you know, least amount of equipment, least amount of technique or experience needed. Now, if we went the other direction with that and said easy means less um, physical exertion and less time required, so less labor intensive, we'd be going in a completely different direction because there are like single coat industrial coatings out there that get sprayed on real quick and you can coat a guitar in, you know, a few seconds. But you need the equipment for that. You need a big compressor, you need a fancy gun, and you need the, uh, the skills, the experience to be able to operate that. You need the expensive, um, probably finish that, that is required for it, and you need a bunch of safety gear. So all of that, you know, the application itself might be quick and easy, so to speak, but all of that makes it not an easy way to finish your guitar, at least for the purposes of this video. <clears throat> because I'm assuming that most of you guys who are watching this are looking for something that simple, doesn't have a huge learning curve, that kind of thing, as opposed to something where you need a bunch of experience and equipment and you're looking to, you know, paint hundreds of guitars easier and simpler. You're probably not coming to me for that. So we're going to be talking about what methods require the least equipment, least experience and training, uh, yeah, and are just generally easy to do. So after that relatively long introduction, Let's get to it. What application methods do we actually have? Well, we all know you can spray, and you can do that with a gun or with paint cans. I've done both of those many times during many videos. Uh, it's not difficult spraying a guitar with a spray can. Not really a challenge per se, but there's risk of runs. You need to know how to layer stuff up correctly. Um, you need safety equipment. You need a decent location to do it in and all of that. We're not going to get into the guns and compressors because... You know, that kind of defeats the purpose of the video. Spray cans, not all that difficult an option, like I said, but I don't think that it is the easiest way for the purposes of this video. So what else do we have? You can brush your paint on, obviously. I have done a video on how to brush on a nice gloss finish. Again, not difficult uh, per se. Not the easiest though, necessarily. You do need some technique. There are a bunch of different types of finishes you can brush on. There are gloss solvent based finishes. There are uh, things like lacquer, brushing lacquer that you can put on that require, you know, like, like I said, a good technique, decent overlap. You have to be careful about uh, restarting strokes and trying to fix things because it can put bubbles in. So I would call that relatively easy, but you know what? Frankly, I find that more difficult than spraying because spraying, your risk is putting runs in and stuff like that. But with brushing, it's very difficult with some types of paint to not get brush strokes. So I put that on, on kind of the harder end, if you will, of the painting techniques. All right, so what else do we have? Well, there are kind of buff on methods for shellac, for example, a French polish. I don't even know how to do that. I'm gonna say that's probably not the easiest way to finish your guitar. Uh, you can get this. You can roll paint onto your guitar if you want using a roller. It's not common. And uh, it's not really a guitar painting method, but can it be done? Absolutely. I mean, it's a piece of wood. You're going to finish a piece of wood. You can use any finishing technique that is appropriate to a piece of wood. And rolling on a finish is one of them. I don't think it's the easiest way uh, because there are a lot of corners that a roller really doesn't work properly on. And I don't know what you're going to do with those. Maybe foam brush them or something. Hey, maybe I'll do that in a video one of these days. But in terms of actual guitar painting methods, nah. 
I don't think that's the easiest way to finish your guitar. That leaves us, at least as far as I'm concerned, with one general category. There are going to be some things to talk about within this category, so don't worry. Uh, but generally speaking, I think the easiest way to finish your guitar is with a wipe-on finish. Something that you can wipe or rub on or buff on, depending on how you're doing it, depending on what you're using. So that's the answer, really. Now, within that, there are, again, a bunch of different options. So, for example, wipe-on poly, uh, available from Home Depot. I've done a few, or probably a bunch of other places, too. I've done a few videos on that. I did one about how to get a perfectly smooth finish by hand, and I applied it with sandpaper. A couple wiped on coats over top of that. Looks great. That kind of stuff is, is very simple. You wipe it on in small coats. It's labor intensive because, sorry, thin coats. It's labor intensive because you, you have to do a lot of them. But eventually, you can build up a nice gloss finish or a thin satin finish or really whatever you want if you know what you're doing. You can even polish them after. So that's a good option. Uh, another wipe on finish option is oil finishes. So there's of course, you know, things like tongue oil, teak oil, true oil. I'm not gonna go through the whole list. There's a lot of different stuff. Those are wipe on finishes. They're easy to apply. You can literally pour some on there and just wipe it around. People do it all the time. And again, with patience and a little bit of extra labor, but not necessarily extra skill or technique or actual difficulty, you can get a really nice finish that way. Uh, my favorite from that category, at least at this point in time, is the modified tongue oil from Mohawk. That's just me personally, if you're doing a guitar. Now, if you're doing, I know this isn't the topic of the video, but if you're doing something like a cutting board, for example, then you can't do that, okay? Then you need to move to um, usually a mineral oil, which is basically the same thing as butcher block oil, but cheaper because it doesn't say butcher block oil on the can. But if you get a mineral oil, it'll say something along the lines of can be used as a or natural laxative or something like that. You know, it's food safe. And yeah, do your butcher block that way. Can you do a guitar with that? I guess you can, yeah. Uh, it will eventually dry out and it's not really a finish per se, but it looks nice. And you can update it very easily by just wiping on some more. Let's move on. So if you're finishing in your garage or in a shop or, or something like that where you've got decent ventilation and everything all of those wipe on finishes work fine there are fumes it, it'd be nice if you can wear a respirator particularly when working with the poly for example uh, there are even wiping lacquers that work just fine so those are all easy options you can also get water-based versions of some of this stuff and that kind of thing although it's not necessarily easier to apply adds another layer of ease in that you don't need a dedicated area to do it necessarily. You can do it in your office, in your living room, in your kitchen, whatever it happens to be. So that, again, depending on how you look at it, makes things even easier. And that brings me to what I'll call my standout option in terms of when I think I want to do this quick and easy, what do I think? Well, I don't want to have to set up a spray gun. Maybe I don't even want to have to leave my house. What I think of immediately is Odie's oil. Now I've done demos and reviews of this stuff. They've got a bunch of different products, but this is not an inexpensive product. Okay, it's a lot cheaper than buying a spray gun and it lasts a very long time. If you get a can of Odie's about this size, uh, you can do several guitars with it, but they're pricey, okay? Here's why I think they're the easiest. They have no odor. You can do them wherever you want, all right? The recoat times are very easy. You don't need much of it. You just buff it on with a, no, a non-abrasive pad and then wipe it off with a rag after and repeat until you feel like you're done. Feels great after. That's not really the point though. We're not really getting into quality stuff here. Um, not a great gloss finish if that's what you're going for. Again, it's not really the point. But you can apply it a bunch of different ways. You can apply it with a buffing tool if you want. You can apply it, you can apply it with a rag even though that's not what's recommended. Or you can apply it with the low abrasive pad um, I've actually done it with a low abrasive pad attached to my DA sander before and, and fired it on real quick that way. Lots of different options. But again, beauty of it, uh, you don't need any real special technique because there's a lot of different options and you don't need a dedicated space per se. I have applied Odie's oil to a surface before on my kitchen table while watching a movie with my wife. She didn't, didn't love that I was doing that. Uh, but it was like some crappy romantic comedy that I had no interest in, so it was a compromise. Odie's oil. That's the one that I like to go for. 
Now for clarity, I like and use pretty much every option I just talked about. One that I maybe should have put a little bit more focus on, although it's got quite a stench to it, uh, is shellac. You can put on a shellac finish very, very easily with a foam or with a, with a brush rather. Um, yeah, you could probably use a foam brush or just by wiping it on. Very simple to do, uh, smells a little more. And like I said, a French polish, not easy from what I can tell. I, I don't know how to do them, but that's also an easy option. So let's talk about where you can get some of this stuff. Obviously my favorite products I have, I use a lot and I have affiliate links to them. So that this isn't meant to be an ad for those specifically, but if you want the Odie's oil, you can get it through uh, Solo Music Gear. My affiliate link is in the description. And if you want uh, the Mohawk tongue oil, modified tongue oil or different Mohawk products, those are in the Amazon link in the description. Also an affiliate link under finishing supplies. Now, if you want shellac, you can get it at pretty much any hardware store. So there's no point in me trying to put it into my links because just walk into, you know, your local hardware store or Home Depot or something like that. Um, <laughs> that actually, bring, quick tangent, brings me to a funny story. I had a guy on YouTube get very mad at me for saying, you can find this at your local Home Depot um, instead of supporting a particular, like your local mom and pop hardware shop. Uh, and he, he had, was having none of it when I told him, I don't know what your local hardware store carries, so how can I tell you they have this here? But <clears throat> anyway, they probably have shellac. I don't know for sure. Home Depot definitely does. Rona, those kinds of places. Wipe on poly, easy to come by as well. There are other brands of tongue oil that aren't Mohawk that are easy to come by. Be careful though, because pure tongue oil is different. Uh, it still works, but it's different. It doesn't build up the same and some of the modified tongue oils are heavily polymerized and don't quite build up the same. So I'm not saying that's a problem or a bad thing. It's just not quite what I'm used to and therefore not my favorite because I've used some of those other options and I just don't like them as much. I've heard Formsby is really good. Dan from Guns and Guitars has a tongue oil that's I think readily available. I think it's called Formsby's and he's had really good success with it. So maybe check that one out. And of course those other options, you know, wiping lacquers and stuff like that. I'm sure they're available from various places. I just don't happen to have links for them. Um, so I think that about covers it. You know now what I think the easiest way is to finish your guitar. Unlike most of my what's best, what's easiest, all that stuff uh, videos, in this, in this particular case, I actually have an answer for you, which is nice for a change instead of just saying it depends. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, it depends. It depends on what you want. Like I said, at Odie's Oil, you're not gonna get a big heavy gloss from it modified tongue oil, it's gonna to be tough to get a gloss from it. Um, that's not really what they're for. If you wanna do that, get a gloss wipe on poly. You'll have to make those decisions as you go. That just went from a decisive answer to the exact opposite in about 10 seconds, go figure. All right guys, so I've now managed to turn what should have been a quick answer into a relatively long video with a fair bit of explanation. That might be good, it might be bad, but regardless, it's now done. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. If you did, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. And remember to subscribe so you can see all the cool projects I have coming out. There are quite a few on my list. We're not going to get into that right now because this video is already long enough. Thanks again. Hope you guys have a good one and I will see you next time.